Welcome back to Marimbology, Beard Edition. Today we have an analysis of Undertale Variations arranged by my man, Doug Perry. For those of you that don't know Doug Perry, he's a really amazing musician. And he has a live stream that he does every Monday called Marimba Mondays. And you can watch him on Twitch and request songs and he will play the songs on the spot. He's one of my favorite people to watch on the internet right now. You should totally check it out, Marimba Mondays with Doug Perry. This video is coming from Raina from Vancouver, Canada. Thank you so much for sending this in. If you would like your video on the show, you can submit a YouTube link, Dropbox link, or Google Drive link to marimbology at gmail.com. Let's get started. Alright, first of all, I can't believe you've only been playing percussion for three years. That is ridiculous. You're the kind of person that has so much talent that it makes people might, like me be like, man, I just need to quit. I need to quit music forever and find something else in life. Alright, there's a ton of stuff that you're doing amazingly well. First of all, you're doing a great job at voicing the melody. I can always hear that melody on top, and you have a really good balance of the accompaniment as well. Sometimes I want just a little bit more bass, but I understand that this is probably recorded on a cell phone, so there could have been more bass in the venue. You also have a really wonderful feel for the phrasing of the piece. You're doing some very natural slight push and pull with some dynamic contour, and that's really advanced stuff. It sounds fantastic. So far, the, the only thing I could really say is you're having a, a, some note accuracy issues. Now, even the greatest marimba players of all time say that they miss a note every time they play a piece. Okay, so it's a given that you're going to miss some, but I think some of the notes that you're missing could be avoided with two simple fixes. Now the first thing I explained in my last analysis video, so you can check that out if you want, but basically with Steven's grip, when you start spreading your hands out, you have to flatten your hand position. So instead of your thumb being up like this, your thumb needs to kind of move over like that. Otherwise, when you start spreading your hands, your elbow has to go up in the air, and then you start losing sound quality, and it's very easy to miss notes. So see my last video if you want some tips and some exercises on how to work on that. Number two, it is good to have expression when you play, and your body has some very naturally expressive things that it's doing to enhance the music, which is really great. I'm not a super big fan of like modern front ensembles that just do like the worm with their body the entire time that they play, but what you're doing is very, very expressive. I just think one thing that you're doing with your motion might be contributing to some missed notes, and that is, I want you to look at your feet. You're doing a lot of swaying side to side and some shuffling with your feet at times, and I'm not sure if that's intentional, but if it's not intentional, I think if you did not do that in practice, that might be why you're missing some notes. As we watch the video, just take a look at your feet and your motion throughout uh, the performance. Thank you. 
Okay, once again, there's some really great things going on. I think your roll speed is super good, especially in that venue with that style of marimba. Um, your roll speed is absolutely perfect. You're continuing to do a great job voicing the melody. I still can't believe you've only been playing percussion for three years. Ridiculous. Another thing that I like is that your instrument height's really good, and you're doing a really good job of keeping your hands kind of close to the keys. Um, now, one thing I want you to take a look at is your right hand. Whenever you have an outside mallet on an accidental, you're kind of doing this sometimes, and you're, you're bending your wrist a little too much to get that interval. So I think that's a scenario where, once again, you should flatten out your hand position a little bit and maybe use a little bit more elbow instead of bending your wrist to get those intervals. It's going to make you more consistently accurate getting those intervals correct. Okay, I'm gonna stop you there for a second. In this last section, there was a lot of missed notes, but if you look at your feet, you are constantly shuffling back and forth between one foot and the other foot. So if you wanna rewind this video about mm, 20 seconds, take a look at that. You're constantly hopping back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I feel like if you just remain stationary and use leaning a little bit more, that that would not be as big of an issue. One thing that's really great though, is when you did make some mistakes, you did not let it phase you and just you just kept right on going. And that's a scenario where a lot of people, like a lot of non-musicians especially, they're not gonna be able to tell that you made a mistake as long as you just play through it like nothing ever happened. And you did a really great job of that. Very mature. <laughs> Oh man, you had some great, great musical moments in there. Your sensitivity is amazing. Very musical, I loved it. So man, there's not a whole lot to say. You are on the right track, for sure. I mean, you're doing amazingly well for someone who's only been playing mallets for a few years. So I hope you continue to play. You're gonna be a total beast. I mean, you already are pretty much a beast. Yeah, I actually think the biggest thing in your playing that probably needs some attention is your footwork. 
And yes, you have to move your feet to play the marimba because it's a big instrument, but I think you're just doing it way too much and it's causing problems for you. So here's one thing that you can try that may help you get a little bit better feel. I want you to go to the bottom end of the marimba and you're gonna play a two octave C scale, but you're gonna stand vertical with your belly button in front of the halfway point. And then I want you to lean all the way to the left and then play the scale two octaves up and two octaves down, but don't move your feet. So only get yourself around the keyboard strictly by leaning. I feel like if you do this, you're gonna get a little bit more confidence that you, you don't have to shuffle your feet quite so much when you play. And that's gonna allow you to be more accurate and it's gonna be a little less distracting from the audience's perspective. Also as a side note, your friends on stage were extremely respectful and patient to just sit up there while you got to play a solo, which is really, really amazing. My senior year of high school, my band director let me play a snare drum solo, but he cleared everybody off stage first, so it was just me up there by myself. So to have all of those people up there, that really has a potential to be distracting for the audience, but they were very, very respectful, and they were very patient in letting you finish. So, mad props to your friends there. Brandon, thank you so much for sending this in. This was really a delight to listen to. You're doing an amazing job, and I can't wait to see where you end up. Recently, I did a percussion ensemble version of Megalovania, which is one of the songs from Undertale. If you haven't checked it out, I'll put a little link right over here and in the description. Hope you like it. All right, everybody, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and bells if you want some more of it. I'll see you next time.